Today's, um, today's bite size training is all about how to build an app in 15 minutes. A bit of a challenge, but uh, this is what we uh, decided to do. Now, for those of you who have not attended bite size training before, um, really, we, we, we schedule a bite size training meeting at once a month or once every six weeks six weeks and, it, and it's on a particular topic of one of one of the um the partner uh, products that we um that we work with so it's either going to be an interform and a, or a profound logic this week it's um, it's a profound logic and we tend to alternate between the two but we really really kind of keen to every for everybody to get involved the people that are invited to the bite size training are existing uh, customers that are using the, the products so if you've got a particular issue or you want some more information on on one of the topics relating to one of these products then give us a shout and we'll build a bite-sized training in the future um to to cover that but today uh, our bite-sized training is all about how to build an app in 15 minutes from scratch using the profound ui product so let me just give you a little bit of a background uh, because when I go into the actual demo itself, I've got 15 minutes to build this app, so I'm not going to be spending a lot of time uh, stopping and explaining everything that's going on at that time. I'll, I'll try and keep you informed of what I'm doing, um, but I wanted to set the scene before we go into the demo. So what I'm going to show you is a supplier ordering system, which consists of a few components. So we first, the first thing we're going to do is... I, identify a supplier code using a drop down box um, so we'll select from the drop down box and that that will then generate you from that supplier a list of all the open orders so we're going to have a, another screen that's going to give us a list of all the orders for, that are currently open for that supplier we're going to have a screen where we can add a new order by selecting an item from another drop down box and entering a quantity and getting prices and so on and then we're going to have a charting function, which gives us a summary of all of the orders by uh, some summarized quantity by part number. OK, so just quickly to give you a little bit of information about what the data files that are involved, because you'll see some of these field names being used as I go through the demo. Um, we've got a number of supply that's files that are already preloaded with some information so i've got a, a supplier master file called submast in this case and you can see i've got up to five suppliers with an address and a postcode and so on and this, these are the names of the the uh, the field names within that submast file it's important you see this at the moment because as you go through i'm going to start making references to these and these are all character 30 apart from the postcode which is a character 15. I've got a sub item file, which consists of the item description price and an image file. Um, and those are prefixed with IT. And you can see this is a decimal seven zero. Uh, the descriptions character 30 and so on. And this is typically the information that you'll see on those on those screens. Now, when we go through the designer. Um, all of the elements that I'm going to be dragging onto the screen. Uh, are automatically assigned an ID, a unique ID reference. So in this particular case, um, if I add an output field, it will be given automatically a, an ID name, a unique ID name called output field two or output field three or, or whatever, uh, if the system tracks that, the, the PUI system tracks that. And that's important because each widget that I put or each element that I put onto the, the canvas, I can interact with those. Um, by referencing them by their ID name, and you'll see that I'll do some of this, these techniques. But we can, anything that appears on the client side, we reference it using a, a screen ID name. Anything that we want to send back to the program at the other end, we use a program variable binding technique. So on the, on the left-hand side of the picture, you'll see that if I want to retrieve a a field name called SP name from the program, I, re, I will create a field binding against that element. And then I can communicate with that element between program and element, as well as element and element on the, on the client side. 
I just wanted to clear up some of those um, techniques before I go in because you'll see me doing a lot of these and I won't have time while I'm doing the actual demo itself to um, to, um, to to explain some of these. I just wanted to, to go through that more. Okay, so we're in a position now to get started. So we're now going to set the clock running. We've got 15 minutes to um, to start on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new canvas here's my blank canvas i'm going to drag on here uh, a label um, component which is basically just um, identifying a name it's just a fixed name that appears on the screen and then what i'm going to do is going to add a text box where we can enter the um the actual supplier code but i'm going to turn this into a selection box so my select box now becomes a drop down box. Okay, and I'm going to set it, going to make a field binding called SP SUP, which is the supplier code, and that is a character 10 field. That's going to respond back to the program, but what I'm going to now do is take a database um, file and I'm going to qualify it with the, the, uh, the library name. I don't have to do this. I could, I could pick up the library list from the, um, the job that's running this. So we'll, we can talk about that later on. But for the time being, I'm going to hard code a, uh, a library name and a table name. And I'm going to, from that table, select the supplier code as my drop down choice and value. Choice is what appears in the, in the drop down list and value is what um, what gets passed back to the program. So here, now I'm going to put in a, a graphic button at the end here somewhere and I'm going to call it exit. This gives me the ability to end the program and I'm going to bind that to a response indicator called exit. BTN exit button. So instead of using F3 or you know, star INKC, I'm going to have a, an exit button which I will use. So that's pretty much my um, my supplier drop down list, and it's bound to an uh, an automatic um, database driven uh, component. So we'll see how that works in a little while. What I'm now going to do is drag in a tab panel. And I'm going to just change the tab panel name to address. And in here, I'm going to drag in some labels, which will be a supplier name. I'm going to left justified, and I'll drag in another one, which has got the address. These are just uh, labels on the, that appear on the screen. Then I'm going to drag in a, an output field, as you would do in your normal SDA function, uh, input field, output field. And this is going to be called SP name. This is, I'm going to give it the same name as the name of the database. That way I don't have to move things around when I, um, when I go back between the program and um, the screen and I'm going to copy that and make it an address so this will be called SPADR1 and that's a 30 byte field as well and we've got two of those so I'll make another one we've got a town oops that's 30 bytes as well. And we've got a postcode. They don't all line up, but that's just because I'm rushing. Okay, and this is called SPPST. And this is 15 characters. Okay, now this one's quite important because if we just notice, take note of this output field copy four, this is the name of the ID. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put in a, a little button down here. 
and I'm going to change this to say map and I'm going to create an event which is one of the options down here so when I press button on click um, I've got some save me typing all this in I'm just going to type this cut and paste it. I'm setting up an, an event <coughs> at put field to copy for which get <coughs> excuse me which gets a value the postcode value from the field and stuffs it into a URL link and then I'm using a, a, a JavaScript function code which you'll see at the front to open a new window okay so that's my first tab the next one I'm going to do is create a list of orders and on here I'm going to drag in a uh, subfile grid all the those, those that know what subfile is and I'm going to add a database drop down not drop down but database uh, there we go project DST and it's called sub O R D R, and from here I'm going to select the there's a date and time field, an item, and a quantity. So it's going to automatically populate my subfile with the fields that that I've uh, picked up from that database. Now I need to put some selection criteria in in here because I don't want the whole database displayed. I only want to display them for the supplier that I've selected. So if I put a, a selection criteria, and this is going to basically create me a where clause on an SQR statement. So where the subcode on the file is equal to, and then I put a parameter value, and that's going to I'm just going to put in a little script to say pu using a get function to get the text box one field and that needs to be in quotes so let me just show you what that looks like Ooh, I've got an error text box one I'm using a, a function called PUI get to get the value of the, this the contents of this drop down box and build that into a where clause so that's going to automatically populate my subfile and that's all I really need to do there this one's going to be a new order tab and on here I'm going to add another label for my product code so I'm, I'm going to create a new order now and I need to select a product code that I'm going to order from the supplier uh, again I'm going to use a drop down box to get hold of the supplier and in this particular case it's going to be a file called logic bst sub item so this is my item file and I'm going to create a drop down list using the item and the value that's sent back to the program is also going to be the item there's no selection criteria on here but the value that I want to also send back to the program if I create the field binding is IT item and that is a character 10 I think okay so there's there's my drop down box I now need to put an output field on here to display the um, description which will be IT desk and that's 30 so um, as a result of reading the file that will be automatically populated by the program I need a quantity field I need a price field and I need a quantity input box there we go and I'm going to bind that to a field called OD quantity this is a 
and that's 11.5 the decimal. This price field is an output field, so don't I can get the price from the item master, which is item price. I don't need to enter that. That is also decimal 11. Five. Now, I need to also show an image. And on this particular image, I'm going to, there's an image source. Uh, image source, and I'm going to bind that to ITIMG, which is 100. And I'm going to add some. Bear with me, I'm nearly finished, but I'm just going to add the button on there to say when I press this, I want to go back to the program and create the order. And in here, I'm going to create a value add D. This sets me a Sorry, it's not that one, it's the response. And LRD. This creates me a an indicator value that gets passed back to the program. Um, I'm going to make this left. I'll just do for the, the speed, I'm going to delete this and add a new one in. So it looks nice. Okay, I'm going to add a new tab because we now want a chart. Okay, and I'm going to go down to my chart functions, which is this one here. I'll take a 2D column. And I'm now going to go and put a database driven file in here, which is logic BST sub MRDR. Name field. Name field is the the values that appear across the bottom of the grid. And the value fields are the ones that are going to appear going up the grid, which I'll take quantity. And I'm going to make a summary function of this. And I want to make some selection criteria where OD um, sub, almost forgot for a moment, OD sub, and I'll get my, do my script to get my um, text box one value as well. P U I D E T. Ooh, it would help if I could spell and type. Okay, so that, that's now a, a grid that's going to be populated. And this now, I'm going to save it. I can't save it because I have to define a record format. So I'm going to call my record formats F01. And I've got a subfile which I'm going to call F01S. Okay, so now I've finished. I'm going to save this as... Um, APIN15D already exists. I'll replace it. Okay, so that's my screen. I'm going to come back and go through this a little bit slower, but I just I want to finish off by um, showing you what this has actually created for me. If I look at this this um, DDS source member, it's actually created me a screen file, a DDS screen file, in the same way that SDA would. And when I compile this, it's going to create a file object with a display attribute of DSPF. So this is this is fairly common uh, to people that you've, you've been used to writing programs with subfiles. But what isn't common is this HTML keyword. And it, HTML, the HTML keyword is actually a valid keyword within DDS. So whilst it looks like a load of gobbledygook, um, that's been stuffed in there. That's because PUI has 
has basically taken the the design that I put and made it into a HTML framework. But you'll see that I've got a record format FO1S, which is a subfile. I've got display subfiles and controls and so on. I've got a format for the first screen. And at the bottom, I've got all these field definitions that I've created in the same way that you would if you'd have done it with SDA. Which now means that when I create the program, I've already preloaded the program. So it's a very simple program. Um, I've got the file spec as a reference, as a workstation file. And I've got this special handler keyword. We'll come on to that in a little while. I've defined some files, one's output, two input, so that when I return to my program, um, the program can then interact with that screen using those bound, uh, those bound uh, elements. And all the program's doing is it's repeating around the reading the screen until I press the exit button, and that was the one of the buttons that I bound um, to that. It's doing a couple of chains on the supplier file and the item master file using the fields off the screen. And then I've got an if statement here where it which says, if I press the add button, then I just want to add a new record to the order database. So it's a straightforward, simple program, nothing really to write home about there. And it's only a few lines, probably 20 lines of code. So I, I already had that preloaded. Right, so now if I go back to my screen and I launch my application, well, there's a good sign because it's working. So the first thing it does, creates me a drop down list on my supplier file, and you can see it's automatically given me these. Now, I didn't code that in the program. That's something that I did as a database driven drop down box on the on the um, the screen design, and that's quite important because using these techniques that we have available to us in the designer massively speeds up the amount of um, time it takes to write an application. And bear in mind, I've written this in 15 minutes. So if I click on my supplier, it then opens up my tab box, and you can see from there I've got my uh, supplier name and address that's been re retrieved. And what's happened is, I, as a result of doing my uh, selecting my drop-down box, it's gone back to the program. The pro program's done a chain, and then because I've bound the field names to the same name as the database, it automatically populates those. But I've now got a Google Map. So if I click on the Map button, it opens a new window, which was the script I put against this button, and it shows me that. Uh, location in the Google Maps based on the postcode that, that I've selected from the screen. Okay, so look at my orders tab, and it's given me a list, a subfile list of all of the orders for this this supplier. And the first field that I chose was a date and timestamp. So there's my date and timestamp. That's the item number, and then this is the quantity. I can create a new order. Let's create an order for a different supplier. Um, so what I'm now doing, I'm selecting an item number from a drop-down list, list. So if I select item number 26, I put in quantity. What it's also done is using the an image um, folder name that was on the database. I put that as a, into an image command, so you can actually see what the uh, an image of the of the, the product itself. When I add the order, it's going to commit that to the database, and there you go, you see in the orders list. So if I now look at my charting function, uh, let me just select a better one for you. There's my there's a charting function that's built on the fly from a database-driven, uh, you know, data access, and it's summarised by part. These are the part numbers across the bottom, and the quanti the summarised quantity of all of the um, orders for those so that's the end of the um, the demonstration and I'm going to open up the the microphone for questions now but um, let me just see where we are. I'll unmute everybody but I think I'll start off by asking a, a question uh, and then you can all dive in and, and um, the, 
the ones that are amongst you that aren't shy, you can ask. Um, we can go through any scenarios. But first question is, did I actually build an application in 15 minutes? Or is this a little bit of a gimmick? And the answer, to that, the answer as far as I'm concerned, is the, this was built from scratch. Okay, I, I'd already preloaded the RPG program just to save time. But I started with a blank canvas. This is not a model that was generated from uh, you know, some, some code generator. I actually designed this from scratch. Okay, I have a little bit of knowledge of the system, but you could you could pick this knowledge up and you could be designing something as simple as that within within 15 minutes quite quickly. Within a couple of days, you could be doing that. Um, but is it a gimmick? Well, this really is the cornerstone, as far as I'm concerned, of, of applications. So when we look at the way that, you know, the functionality that we've put into this program, um, I've got four tabs. They're all doing something uh, individual. I'm using a lot of database access that I didn't have to write code for because I'm using a function that's pre-built. And all of those widgets that, that are available to us in the designer, um, we can use in the same way and we can communicate between elements on the screen and elements in the program to build up this functionality. So from my point of view, this this is really the, you know, the, 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 the the roots or the basis of where most applications come from. So that that really is where you know the end of the, the demo from 